Hi there guys, welcome back to the channel. Time for another Palace Daily and today some actual concrete transfer news, um, I hope. Um, some rumours have been going around recently, um, as of the time I'm filming this, that um, we put in a bid, a £14 million bid for the young Russian striker Fedor Chalov. Um, under 20, well, he's 21 years old, plays for CSK in Moscow and Russia. Reports are going around Sky Sports, and I will get onto Sky Sports in a minute, um, for obvious reasons, I'm sure most of you are aware. Um, and they're the main, you know, that's the main outlet of this news, news story. Um, all the news is basically coming through that. So, I, obviously, I'm a bit sceptical for that reason. But it is looking like it's the sort of signing that, you know, we'd be, it's kind of come out of the blue and... No, his name hasn't been thrown around the hat with any other clubs either. So I feel like this is something one of the the names on the list um, of the board and Dougie Freeman they on their transfer targets. I'm assuming this is one of those players that that were on their list. Um, and from initial looks at him, I, obviously I knew nothing. I, I, I'm probably like most of you guys. I knew nothing about this young striker. But um, positives, we're going to rattle them off straight away. 21 years old, fantastic. Um, obviously, room to improve there in the future. And also he's got, you know, he's got a, I think, quite a decent ceiling um, as well. Um, obviously, yeah, potential, the pie ceiling comes into that. I think going at his age, he's already had two um, Russia caps um, at the start of the year as well. And at 21 years old, it's quite impressive, especially off of the back of the success Russia had at the World Cup to be able to get into the team and to get his first caps in uh, in this year, the, the follow-up year from the World Cup. I think he's done very well to do that and you've got to be playing well to do that. Um of course, they've got aging strikers um, in the Russia side at the moment, but even so, you still he still put his name in the hat, and he's the one who's got the caps at the end of the day. Um, look at his goal scoring goal scoring tally last season in the Russian league: seventeen goals, seven assists in thirty eight games. He started every game for uh, or played in every game for CSK Moscow, starting striker for the club. Um, an okay goal return, I think. When you're a team like CSK Moscow in that league, I think you'd expect the goal tallies to be a bit higher for a striker who's played that many games. Um, seven assists is quite good as well. You know, it shows he can link up the play nicely, and he's um, he's you know got a bit of vision about him as well in the attacking third. Um, initially, I'm 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 not I'm neither here nor here nor there to be honest. But at fourteen million pounds, I think that is a good. It sounds like a good deal if we can get it over the line. For that price, anyway, um, you think we got Saul off for about nine or ten million, and you know this guy's got Champions League experience with Moscow, albeit with CSK Moscow, but it is quite a big club in terms of European um, experience. CSK Moscow may not be in the best league in the world, obviously, but I think that by the looks of things, the way he plays as well, and his highlights, some really good um, snap strikes. You know, he's got good reactions. Um, good uh what's the word i'm looking for he anticipates a strike he, he gets himself in good positions to have to get the shot off and when he is in a good position he can get the shot off way quickly that's what i've seen from some of his highlights from last season of course highlights show all the good parts the bad sides of the game we're not i'm not too aware of yet and obviously transitioning to the premier league if this does go through will be a big step up for him at his age as well i, I doubt he knows much english as well i'm just assuming that at 21 uh, Russian Russian striker. I'm assuming he, he there'll be a bit of a language barrier as well, and he he may, he probably won't hit the ground running if he does come. But it's a it's a good sign, you know. At last, we're starting to see some actual solid links. Uh, Rumored that this bid has been placed and that fourteen million pounds has been put down. We'll see what happens in the next day or two, and if CSK Moscow, if it is true, if CSK Moscow responds to that bid. Um, but positive signs. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys know any more information on him than you know that I haven't mentioned here on the video. Then obviously comment below and let me know your thoughts as well. Is this the right? Uh, personally, I think it's the right kind of strike we should be going for. That sort of age and with quality, um, proven quality as well. And the fact he's played in the Champions League with CSK Moscow, he scored goals at the top level at a young age. I think that's um, a good sign. You know, uh, uh, you'll remember with Crystal Palace at the end of the day, the, the, those sort of strikers are hard to come by that are natural goal scorers and I think that this is a decent this is the sort of striker we should be looking at decent signing if we can get it over the line and hopefully he'd hit the ground running if he does come um, so of course let me know your thoughts down below guys but obviously I mentioned uh, earlier in the video about Sky Sports that I, other thing I wanted to touch on today um, really just the transfer news in this Everton of course um, have been linked with Zaha over the window recently in the window 
they put in a 55 million pound bid about a week and a half ago and that was instantly rejected by palace um at the weekend weekend just gone sky then reported that uh, everton made a follow up bid after their initial bid got rejected um the price was staying the same 55 million pounds but two players would be included in the deal um Cheng Tosin and also James McCarthy, who we were linked with in the earlier in the window as well. So it would be in 55 million plus those two players for Wilfred Zaha, um, which is more tempting of an offer, obviously, than the initial offer because you've got two players in there uh, as well. I personally think we would have turned it down um, anyway. But it, what we found out later um, in in that evening, in that day, was that Everton released a statement saying that it was a load of rubbish. They've not put in that bid at all. And this really looks bad on Sky, in my opinion. And it, it really annoys me. You know, throughout the, win throughout the window, especially with Zaha, um, Kave Solokol, and especially is the one I'm focusing this at, um, he's been every day tweeting or every other day tweeting about Zaha. Normally the same tweet, just reworded. There's no actual news there. He's just trying to stir up stuff, trying to get people betting on Sky Bet. Um, and this is a great example of it. The whole window has been saying he's going to Arsenal, he wants to go to Arsenal. Obviously, Pepe's coming now and it's, that's not going to happen. Everton are in for him. It looks very strong that Everton are game. doesn't happen. And I know to an extent this is what the media have to do um, to draw, you know, get the views, clicks, all that sort of stuff. But I think he's overstepped the mark. He's blatantly just come out with the fat lie. Um, and, you know, we've Palace fans have been on the edge of their seats about Zahar and we've been nervous about the whole situation and whether he will go or he won't go, what offer. It's really important we make the, you know, we accept the right offer, things like that. And when the media come out, especially Sky coming out with stuff like this and it's blatant lying and you've probably all seen the clip going around Twitter and social media of um, Cavi, Cavi just, you know, he couldn't get his words out last night. He was saying, oh yeah, Everton have said this is not the case, the bid hasn't been made, but I trust in my sources that they have. Like Everton have literally said they haven't made the bid and he's trying to still trying to defend himself. Um personally I think it's just really wrong and that it, it I do think it all comes down to the, the betting that Sky have, the Sky bet. I think that it's all just to, you know, drum up all the money in that. Um and I know that's harsh on some of the reporters because I think there are quite some good reporters there and some that research and get some actual good transfer news out into the public that is real transfer news um also them saying that we were first to tell you this first to tell you this you weren't you weren't first to tell us that and it's nothing to be proud of if you're first to tell us something that's not true and completely false and made up that's not good you know that's not good journalism at the end of the day um so anyway there's a little bit of a rant there but i just thought i had to address it in this video i think it's been really really poor the way they've dealt with zahar and the way they've portrayed um the transfer speculation around him to us i think it's just been really bang out of order um and i uh, I think that they deserve every they deserve what they get, especially Cavi Solokol, because he's he's been doing it all summer window trying to stir up this transfer speculation around Zaha, and he he literally knows as much as anyone else. I honestly think he's just saying the same stuff that we all know already. Um, but anyway, guys, bit of a rant there, but I wanted to finish up on that and Sky in general. But main stuff I wanted to talk about was um, Chalov. Let me know your thoughts on him in the comments below. Obviously never heard of him. Really excited to see if he does turn out to be a good player or, player or not. Whether he's with us, Palace or not. You know, If he has a, an amazing season next year and goes to a big European club, then obviously we, we missed the trick there. But hopefully this these rumours are true and we can you know get this over the line and then focus on getting a right back. I think that's the most important thing after that. But yeah, striker and right back. Fingers crossed we get it done. Let me know your thoughts down below. Like, share, subscribe. See you next time.